Hello friends, Vinyl Community. Welcome to a, another episode of the Vinyl Survivor. Thank you for tuning in. I know it's been a while since we did one of these, but I thought I had some time right now to go ahead and make a make a video, so I thought I'd pop in and make a Vinyl Survivor and say what's up. Hope everyone's doing well, having a great day, great week, great weekend. Whenever it is you're watching this, uh, hope, you're, hope you're doing well. So let's go ahead and get into this batch of records, varied group as always. First thing we have here is the 17th album by Gordon Lightfoot, Canadian folk artist Gordon Lightfoot from 1986. This is titled East of Midnight. Uh, definitely an interesting part of his career, you know, very, very much late in his career, even though he still continues to make music to this day 30 years after this. Very different time, you know, right in the middle of the 80s here. So this album has that very overproduced, very sterile 80s sound to it. The songs on here are really good, actually. I really like the songs on here. Uh, Let It Ride is a great song. The East of Midnight, Morning Glory is a great song. Uh, the, the final track on the album, I'll Tag Along, is great. I really enjoyed this quite a bit. So if you can get past that sterile, overproduced 80s sort of sound, uh, this is a really good album by Gordon Lightfoot and, and uh, really great songs here. So uh, yeah, if you can get past that sterile sound, the songs are really good and, and, and they're really well well made songs. Lyric insert here, not too fancy. You know, we're in the middle of the 80s. Records are starting to go away at this point. And it's on the Warner Brothers label as usual uh, he's one of those artists that st stuck with his label quite well so i guess he had a good relationship uh with them uh but yeah that's gordon lightfoot's east of midnight from 1986 uh an album i really enjoy and is going to be staying in my collection all right next up staying in the 80s but something completely different this is the debut album from frankie goes to hollywood this is welcome to the pleasure dome from 1984 of course, features the song Welcome to the Pleasure Dome, Relax. Kind of an interesting album. This was produced by Trevor Horn. And so he really took over in some aspects of this album, uh, re-recorded a lot of stuff himself or with session musicians. So this isn't really a full Frankie Goes to Hollywood album. It's kind of a... I, I don't know how to, how to describe it, but... He just sort of took over, uh, but it's a good album, good double album. Uh, lots of lots of instrumentation, and once you know that it's Trevor Horn, you kind of get, you kind of see his his touch and his his mark he left on this album. Uh, very very cinematic, you know. Trevor Horn makes a lot of a lot of soundtracks and stuff, so no difference here. Two LP set here, really interesting artwork. Really nice inner sleeves on both of these. You even got a, a merch, a little merch page there. You want some merch? And this is on Island ZZT Records. And they had some custom labels. They're all different colors. It's an F, G. And on the next album, you get a T, and then an H for Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Yeah, a, an interesting album, a classic. Definitely one to keep an eye out for. Uh, you know, definitely one if you're an 80s fan, you probably already have, or at least you know all oh, well. And and I enjoyed this, and so I'm going to be keeping this in the collection. You see somebody stuck the, the Frankie Goes to Hollywood title on here. Looks like maybe that came off of the uh, the shrink wrap at some point. Somebody just glued it on there uh, because, you know, this doesn't have the, the artist's name on the front of the album at all. But yeah, a, a cool album, an interesting album, and uh, it's going to be staying in the collection. All right, moving back in time a little bit, we have uh, David Bowie's 1973 album, Pinups. This is his seventh album. It features all cover songs. Uh, he does a cover of, um, of uh, oh geez, why can't I see Emily play here? Uh, the, there you go. See Emily play Pink Floyd. Does a cover of that on here. A lot of a lot of other color. Uh, a lot of other covers on here. Really pretty good album from him. Uh, very different. It's kind of interesting to see his him take on some of these songs and and do them. RCA Black Label with Nipper on there. 
Uh, not a whole lot to say about this album. It's it's just okay. It's not it's not amazing. It's not a must-have, I would say, but it's good and it's good enough. I enjoyed it enough to keep it, and, and, and I like it. I've, I've definitely have played this quite a bit in the past few months. Uh, I got this at the uh, I think I got it at the Orlando Record Show, maybe. Don't remember exactly. I know I got this at a record show. I paid ten bucks for it. wasn't wasn't necessarily cheap. Uh, Bowie stuff tends to tends to get higher prices and but yeah I, I like this album a lot and it's a keeper for me so david bowie's pinups 1973 uh, a good album and if you see it and it's a it's a it fits your price budget get it all right moving back into the 1980s with some hip-hop here we have the debut album from the k9 posse self-titled debut album uh, this one has this beat is military on it uh, ain't nothing to it it gets no deeper, no stopping or standing between the line, between the rhyme, uh, tough cookie, uh, really definitely very, very strong 80s hip hop here, uh, very good musically, uh, very good lyrically, I should say, uh, just, just some good solid 80s hip hop, you know, before things got out of control with 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 all the different sort of gangster kind of things that happen and stuff, and this is just some really good really good boastful hip-hop and uh, really enjoyable so really I've had this album for quite a while I originally got it on cassette I believe and then had it on CD for a while and I found it on vinyl in Orlando a couple years back so I picked it up I got this for four bucks at Park Avenue in Orlando um, and it is a gold stamp promo you do get a uh, insert with lyrics on it which is kind of interesting for for a hip-hop album I don't often get that, but there they are if you want them. And this is on the Arista label. Really nice black and black and teal and silver label. So yeah, that's Canon Posse debut album 1988 or 89, 88. Good debut album from them and some good hip hop. So if you see this one out in the wild, go ahead and grab it. It's worthwhile if you like if you like hip hop at all anyway. All right, moving on to something completely different once again. Uh, we have an album from Elvis Presley. This is from Elvis Presley Boulevard, Memphis, Tennessee. It leads you to believe that this is a live album, but it is not a live album. It is recorded live. He set up sort of a, a makeshift studio in his house, I guess, and recorded this album. So I guess it has somewhat of a live feel to it, but it's not really a concert album. I think this is a nec his next to his next to last album. His album Blue, I guess, was the last one before he died. Uh, and this was a gift from Memphis Jim and the Misses uh, when they visited a few years ago. Uh, I'm not really a big Elvis fan. I'm not an Elvis fan at all, I should say. But it's nice to have this one piece of of Elvis music in the collection just to have, and I, I enjoyed it. Okay, it's a little it's still a little challenging for me to really get into it, but. It's Elvis. It's very late. It's late Elvis. It's very country tinged. Uh, he does the song "Hurt" on here. Blue eyes, crying in the rain. Danny boy, I'll never fall in love again. And it's on the RCA Victor Tan label there. Um, so yeah, I can't really recommend this. It's just it's Elvis. You either like him or you don't. And I'll have I'll have one piece of Elvis in the collection. So I'm gonna be hanging on to this one. Maybe pull it out every once in a while just to revisit it and see if my thoughts have changed on Elvis. But for right now, I don't really, don't really care for him that much. All right, next up we have another posthumous compilation from Jimi Hendrix. This is the one titled "Hear My Music." It was originally released in 2004. Uh, this is the 2014 Record Store Day re-release. Uh, probably the first time this was on vinyl, I think. Uh, they did a numbered release. This is number 1897. And yeah, it's just another one of those sort of compilation Jimi Hendrix uh, re-release. More, more sort of material. Uh, frankly, I'm starting to get tired of all this extra material from Jimi Hendrix. I mean, yeah, I, I guess it was enjoyable for a while, but at some point it just gets overwhelming and there's all these different versions of the same song. But so 
so yeah, these are uh, these are on 200 gram pressed at QRP. Uh, so unfortunately, they used to be pressing the, all the Jimi Hendrix stuff at RTI. RTI is awesome. QRP is not as good in my opinion. Uh, the, the vinyl is just not as quiet. Uh, the quality just doesn't seem to be there compared to RTI stuff. Um, so yeah, that's another disappointment for me with the, with the newer uh, Jimi Hendrix stuff. Is uh, yeah, and they don't make the booklets anymore. It just prints. They just print some liner notes on the inside of the gatefold, and that's all you get. You used to get a nice booklet that had ten or so pages in it with a lot of photos and stuff. So yeah, kind of a letdown on this one. Uh, this was forty dollars for you know it's a record store day release, so you're gonna pay more to begin with and. I feel kind of let down overall with this one for forty dollars, but I'm gonna be holding on to it for now anyway, just to, just to have it. But the music's just okay, kind of a letdown. All right, the next thing I have to talk about is the third album from a flock of seagulls. This is the story of a young heart from 1984, the last album made with the full lineup of the band. Uh, they went for a less they pulled back on the sort of synth synth pop aspect of it and made it give it sort of a more of a European indie pop rock kind of feel. Uh, and actually, I actually like the way this album sounds. I kind of like I like how it's a little more rock and roll, but still, it's it's still new wave. It's still poppy, uh, but it just has. A little more of a balance of the instruments you know it's not real heavily synthy it's it's got you know guitars and drums and stuff like that uh, and, and a good a good album I really enjoyed this one quite a bit uh, it gets really good near the end uh, the last few songs on side two side the whole album flows really nicely it has a good feel it has a, a good cohesive feel to it I like this one quite a bit I was actually surprised uh, is another one from Park Avenue CDs for five bucks. Some interesting photos on the insert there. And it's on the Jive Arista label. Uh, so yeah, Flock of Seagulls, Story of a Young Heart. It's good in my book. I really enjoyed it. Uh, good music, good flow, good cohesiveness, uh, interesting songs, and uh, they uh, definitely, definitely staying in the collection, so I uh, recommend this one if you see it. And you like you like uh, new wave kind of stuff. All right, next up we have a jazz album from 1975 on the CTI label. This is Don Sebesky, The Rape of El Moro. Don't know a whole lot about this one. There's the gatefold. Uh, quite an interesting album. Uh, very very interesting very weird very strange at times you know kind of the cover kind of sounds kind of like the cover the cover art does really well it's kind of something you might hear at some sort of odd dance performance maybe but interesting and you know I, I kind of enjoyed it quite a bit so I can't say a whole lot about it it's you'd have to sample it online just to get an idea of what it's like it's it's very much, well, I wouldn't say it's very much. The CTI did a lot of different things, but it has sort of a, sort of that CTI experimental jazz sound to it, you know, mid 70s experimental jazz kind of sound. Don Sebesky, of course, and uh, Randy Brecker, uh, Michael Brecker, David Sanborn plays on here, uh, Ron Carter, of course, plays on here. <laughs> He's always on CTI stuff. So yeah, pretty good lineup of people and some pretty interesting songs. Uh, this is another one I paid five dollars for at uh, at Park and Avenue CDs, and I've actually seen this in in dollar bins and stuff at record shows. So, you know, if you see it for cheap, I'd say give it a try if you're interested in this kind of mid '70s jazz kind of stuff. And that's on the uh, CTI Yellow label. And Van Gelder and the Dead Wax, of course. Van Gelder d did the mastering on this. Um, so yeah, Don Sebesky, The Rape of El Moro. If you're into, if you're into this stuff, and you see it cheap, go ahead and 
Go ahead and pick it up. It's a good listen, in my opinion. I'm going to be keeping it. All right, next up is a new release from last year, 2014. This is the seventh album from the band Liars. This is their album titled Mess uh, on the Mute Record label. This is my first my first experience with the band, really. Uh, they do a very trippy, electronic kind of music. Uh, very interesting. Uh, if you like, like The Knife, it's kind of along those same lines. Uh, really cool stuff here. So I really enjoyed listening to this. This was sort of a, something I wanted to buy something. I saw this in the record store and thought, well, I'll give them a try. I've seen a lot of them in the in the vinyl community. I'll give it a try. I uh, really do love the artwork on this label and or on this on this album and, and if you can see the the um, title embossed on the cover there it continues on on the inner sleeves here and then some custom labels this is a two LP set uh, and mute always has good vinyl uh, always happy with the with the quality I get from anything on mute so that was another reason to to buy this is and it's on mute it's going to be it's going to be quality and the music is good so if you like that sort of trippy electric kind of stuff uh, i say i say check it out check it out if you haven't already uh, live mess 2014 good album and the last thing i have to talk about for today is a blues compilation this is from bessie smith it says the world's greatest blues blues singer this is on columbia uh it's clump compilation of 30 32 songs her first 16 recordings and her last 16 recordings I guess is what the what the concept of this compilation is uh, so you get sort of the early career stuff and the late career stuff I believe these are all transfers from 78 so the sound quality is not that great uh, it does come with a nice uh, nice sort of booklet in here with some history and whatnot on Bessie Smith so yeah, it was okay. I I can't say that you know this is not something I'm going to be keeping. It it was just okay. I really struggle listening to stuff that's been transferred from '78s, even though I know it has historical value. It's really difficult to listen to for an from an enjoyment standpoint. Uh, the, the quality is just not not very good, so it's really difficult to enjoy the music uh, just on its own beyond just the historical value of it. It was on the Columbia red and orange label there. So yeah, this was a this was a nice experience, but not something I'm going to be keeping in the collection, not something I really want to revisit. So if you see this cheap and you just want to experience it like I did, then, then pick it up. Otherwise, uh, unless you want it for historical value, I say don't worry about it. Uh, so that's going to do it for this episode of The Vinyl Survivor. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe if you're not already. This is a variety channel. Got a lot of different stuff on here. Beer reviews, auto repair videos, got camera reviews. Anything I might be interested in is going to be on, on the channel. So never quite know what you're going to get, but I hope you enjoy it anyway. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching. Leave me some comments down below if you have any comments or questions about any of these albums I showed in this episode. And we'll see you again real soon. Cheers.